This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are taking a look at five undervalued weapons in Elden Ring. Let's get to it. There are not many weapons in this game that have more than 110% increase crit bonus damage. Most weapons in this game only have 100% increase crit bonus damage. With the exception of daggers, there are a bunch of daggers that have more than 110% increased crit bonus damage, but that is kind of expected from daggers. However, there is one weapon that you can get right from the very start of the game that could be easily overlooked, and it has a massive 30% increase to crit damage, and that is the rapier. You can purchase this from the maiden husks right as soon as you get access to the round table stronghold for a mere thousand runes. Not only does it have a massive increase to crit bonus damage, it can also have an Ash of War attached to it. It's a pretty basic weapon. I have this thing leveled up to plus 24, and at plus 24, if I was to use Keen on this, you can see that it would give me an A scaling to Dex. I'm not a Dexterity build, so we are just going to use Intelligence because Intelligence is my highest stat. Even with that, it is a B scaling for intelligence. If you wanted to add blood build up to this thing, you could get a B scaling with dexterity and a D scaling with arcane. And I have pretty decent arcane on this build and you can see that would give me 101 blood build up on it. And what's really fun is that crits on this thing will benefit from skills like Determination and Royal Knight's Resolve. The increase that you get from this will also stack with the increase that you get from the Dagger Talisman. You can see there, all it does is just enhances crit hits. So without Royal Knight's Resolve, if we walk up to this guy and we crit hit him, you can see we do 1866. That's not bad. You're like, man, that's okay. Pretty good damage there. That's with all of our bonuses. But if we target this guy and we proc the resolve and we go to crit hit him, 2,525 on one crit hit. You can pair this with a shield. And if you had blood build up on it, you could sit there and just block and go pokey, pokey, pokey. And you can see that even though we are not really spec for this style weapon, we're still dealing pretty decent damage here just going pokey pokey without even having any blood build up on it. So I'm sure there are a lot of creative things that you could do with this weapon. And I feel like it is extremely undervalued with that 130% crit chance and the fact that you can do pokey pokey from behind a shield with it, which is something you can't do with daggers, which are the only other weapons I know of that have more than 110% increased crit chance other than the executioner's ax which is 115, and it is the only large weapon I know of that has more than 110% crit chance. Or, I should not say crit chance, 110% crit bonus damage. The Butcher's Knife is your standard great axe, and at first glance, it looks like nothing special. But if we read the flavor text on it, you can see that every time we hit with this weapon, it restores a small amount of HP. But the fun thing about this weapon is, is that it can take an Ash of War, and the Ash of War that you use with it counts as hitting an enemy. So if we equip something like Horfrost Stomp to this thing, and we start smacking into enemies, you can see that every time Horfrost Stomp hits, which it hits multiple times, we gain back health and we can hit multiple enemies and gain back health really, really quickly when we are hitting groups of enemies. We just position ourselves here. So we hit both of these guys. Every time it procs on each of them, we gain back a little bit of health. You can gain back health relatively rapidly and you can just spam Horfrost Stomp. With the right build, with the right talismans, you could be not only an absolute life-stealing machine, but you also hit like an absolute truck too, because it's a large weapon. I can't for the life of me figure out why we do not see more builds with this absolute amazing weapon here. The Ansper Rapier comes with a staggering 55 rot buildup every time you hit. And because it is a thrusting weapon, it has relatively quick hits. Not only that, it is one of the few weapons that have rot buildup on them, 
and can also take an Ash of War. This means you can do crazy things like put blood tax on it, which hits the target rapidly multiple times, and equip poison, which will not only poison your enemy, but also cause rot buildup, or blood, which will cause them to bleed and cause rot buildup. If we equip something like blood tax and we use the blood affinity, and let's just get this guy to, uh, to smack us a few times here. And then we come in with a hit. Look at that. We just gained back a ton of health off that guy. Let's get something that has a little bit more durability here. So we're nice and low on health. Let's go in with a blood tax and again, Look at that. That's freaking crazy. And we look at all that health that we gained back. Now, if you're fighting a boss, obviously it's not going to die as fast as these guys. You're going to build up a lot of Scarlet Rot on them. They're going to take Scarlet Rot damage and you are going to build up blood build up on them very quickly with a bunch of quick jabs while you are also gaining back tons of health. On top of that, because it is a pokey pokey weapon, you can also hold a shield and poke over top of your shield while you are blocking building rot build up and blood build up at the same time. Most people probably take a look at the black knife dagger and go, nah, it's a dagger because I don't know about you all, but I don't really care for daggers in this game. I know it's a pretty niche thing. There's some people out there who will enjoy it, but for a majority of people, the range that they lack just makes them kind of brutal to use as your everyday weapon. But the black knife's ability, the blade of death, is absolutely insane. Not only does it burn the target for a percentage of its HP, which makes it an absolute boss destroyer, the animation that you go into when you use the Blade of Death Ash of War puts you into a hyper armor state, meaning that while you are in that animation, you cannot get knocked out of that animation. So once you start casting it, you will continue to cast it no matter what happens to you unless you die. This is one of the very few Ashes of War that I know of in this game that give you a hyper armor state. In a very tanky large build, this thing could be absolutely insane because you could just sit there and spam the Blade of Death over and over and over again, soaking up the hits with little to no issue and just melt whatever you are going after. The next one on the list is going to come at no surprise to many of you. I've already used it in two builds, one of which was my most recent build, which was the Arcane Battle Mage. You can check that out. I will link it down below if you are interested in that. And it is the only intelligence scaling weapon in the game that allows you to apply an Ash of War to it. And that makes it extremely dangerous. If you take a look here, we're just going to use the Bloodhound step as an example. If we come over here to Magic Affinity, that is going to give it a B scaling for intelligence. If we move over here to Blood, that changes its D scaling for intelligence to a C and gives it a D scaling for Arcane. It also changes Strength to C and dex to D. Moving over to cold, we get a C scaling for strength and a C scaling for intelligence and E for dex, and that gives us frost buildup. So you have your choice of pretty much whatever you want with this thing. Poison buildup, still good scaling. Blood buildup, still pretty good scaling. And cold buildup, still good scaling. Not to mention, you have a whole host of Ash of Wars to mess with, to get creative with, with this absolutely fantastic weapon. Not only that, it is another pokey pokey weapon allowing you to hide behind a shield and poke away. Last but not least, we have a bonus weapon and that is the Sword of Saint Trina. This thing is one of the very few weapons in this game that actually has sleep build up on it and it has an Ash of War called Mist of Slumber which puts out a little bit of mist into the air, a little bit of sleep mist and imbues the weapon with additional sleep build up. Now I'm sure some creative people out there could come up with really neat ideas for this build and using its sleep build up capabilities but I find it really handy as a utilitarian weapon. You never know when something's just going to be super susceptible to sleep, like for example, giants. 
Every giant in this game is crazy weak to sleep build up. One or two hits at most, and you're gonna put them down with your first attempt. And then after that, they still go down super easy with maybe an additional hit or two. It's just one of those weapons I keep on me at all times because you never know when it's gonna come in handy and you're gonna have something that just falls asleep really, really easy and gives you a huge advantage over it. All right, and that is pretty much it for this one. Are you already using these weapons? Have you used some of them? Are they sitting in your inventory unused and now you're inspired to go make a build with them? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you found it informational and helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you be notified when I upload other videos. I'll give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Lee Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.